What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And do you want to win money? Of course you do. Enter my Treeb Talks AAF Picks Facebook group or you can make the picks in the comment section down below for the first week of the AAF season. Now first place in this elite group of pickers will earn their choice of a $100 Amazon gift card, $100 via the cash app, or a pair of Apple AirPods. Now all you have to do to enter is leave your picks for the week one AAF games down below and to continuously do that throughout this eight week season for the Alliance of American Football Games. All you have to do is check the link down below in the description to join the Facebook group or you can look in the comment section. I will have it pinned for you guys so it is easy for you guys to enter this contest make sure you don't miss out you don't have to enter week one but if you want the best chance at winning the prize and having more games right than anybody else make sure you enter today and without further ado ladies and gentlemen we're talking jags so hit that intro Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. he's in touchdown jaguars tip and intercepted by ramsey to close it out it's over the Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in my comfort zone talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, it's been a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Something that not a lot of Jags fans are talking about uh, in this day and age is free agency. It's mostly because the Jaguars cap space is a little bit questionable but maybe after some cuts and after we really find out who's going to be on the Jags next year and who's not we might have a little bit of spending money to use in free agency and today I'm going to be going over positions the Jaguars could potentially improve via free agency and not the draft so ladies and gentlemen without further ado this is five positions the Jaguars will try to upgrade in free agency Coming in at number five, we have the safety position. Now, I think the Jags this season in the NFL draft, at least from some of the mock drafts I have been looking at, and from what I think personally the Jaguars are going to do, I think they need to focus on the offensive side of the ball in the draft. Try to get some younger, more athletic players on that side of the ball. And there's a couple of positions on the offensive side of the ball that need work in the draft. And the only position on defense I could see the Jags drafting maybe being a defensive tackle. And that would be maybe even in the first round. There's a lot of people that think the Jags should go defensive tackle in the first round and not an offensive position. I'm not one of those guys and we're not here to talk about the defensive tackle spot. We're here to talk about the safety position. Now, Jared Wilson just got extended to another contract, I believe a three-year extension. With the amount of money he's getting paid, it almost feels like he's going to be getting a little bit of starting time, but you can't do that with a little bit of competition. I think the Jaguars should go out and explore the safety market and really bring in a veteran to challenge that of Jared Wilson to really earn his keep and earn his spot as the starting safety. Now, I don't, there's not too many high profile safeties in this free agency class or that will be a part of this free agency class. However, um, the Jags, like I said, are going to need to bring some sort of competition to breathe down Jared Wilson's throat because though he has had some decent playings and some decent showings, uh, at least from last season, he's nowhere near the great defensive level that a lot of these defensive players are on the job war. So hopefully bringing in a veteran presence at the safety position will help Wilson get better. Number four, the quarterback position. Now, there's been talks among talks among talks about Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles and how he's going to pay out the $2 million so he can be a free agent. Now, I don't think the Jags are going to pay Nick Foles what he wants, so I don't think he's a quarterback the Jags should tr uh, try and target uh, as far as free agency goes. I think if they're going to go out and get him, they should trade for him. Um, the Eagles have allegedly been wanting a third-round draft pick, but with all this Nick Foles drama going on, you really don't know what's going to happen with him until the season begins, and that's why I think the Jags might go cheap and get a guy like Tyrod Taylor, because I think if you're in the Jaguars right now in this situation, you see what the draft class is, you see the free agency class, I think you should do whatever it takes as of now to really trade up and get your guy and try to bring some excitement back to Duval County. I made a video 
about two, three weeks ago about if the Jaguars should sign a veteran quarterback or draft one. I think they should do a little bit of both. But I think if we're talking starting quarterback, I think the Jaguars really need to go out and try and draft their guy now. Yeah, whether that be Haskins or Murray, I'm fine with either one. A lot of people aren't fine with picking Murray at 7, but I'd be 110% fine picking Murray at 7. If Haskins is off the board and uh, Murray's the only quarter quarterback left for us to pick, I think we should give him a whirl. I think we should give him a shot because the excitement level in Duval has been so low. The Jaguars always draft conservative. They need something that'll burst the a whole stadium in excitement, and Kyle Murray brings that to the table. He's just like another Russell Wilson. So I think if the Jags are really trying to get their quarterback, they should draft one. So I think in free agency, they're going to try and target a little bit of a cheaper option that maybe could start at the beginning of the season until eventually getting benched. And a guy that can do that and a guy that, had, that did it last year is a guy like Tyrod Taylor. I think the Jags are going to try and get Tyrod Taylor via free agency as a cheap option and a decent stopgap guy at that. And hopefully uh, Kyle Murray can play when ready or Dwayne Haskins even. Um, and Tyrod Taylor could kind of be the stopgap guy until these young rookies are ready, whoever the job. Coming in at number three, I have the tight end position. Now, if the Jags really wanted to draft a tight end, they should have done it in last year's draft class. That draft had a lot of good, talented tight ends. This year, there's not as many. Um, I think that they try and they go out and get a veteran tight end because that's kind of been their mantra ever since they've really been in the league is just veteran presence you know i know the only tight end that they really drafted it was mercedes lewis in 2005 and that panned out really well for him and he was around for a really really long time but there's a lot of youth on this team and there's going to be a lot of youth on this offense so i think what they need is a young experienced tight end that's also a good blocker because i don't know what john day Lupo is going to be bringing to the table um or what doug marone is going to try and do with his philosophy this year if he's going to try and change it or if it's going to be more of a power run scheme if it is that power run scheme then the jaguars should try and go out and get a blocking tight end not someone that's necessarily elite pass catcher because, you know, we could send guys out there that we already have, like James O'Shaughnessy, and see what he can bring. And that's another thing is that the coaching staff seems to believe a lot in James O'Shaughnessy. So maybe he'll just be the starting tight end heading into next season. We'll uh, get a guy in free agency that will help with depth, kind of like uh, Niles Paul, you know, what we did last year. But I think they need to get somebody who's a veteran, who's been around for a while, and really knows how to play the tight end position. And I think it needs to be a veteran and not a rookie at that position. Coming in at number two is middle linebacker. Yes, the Jags need a middle linebacker. And there's no point in going for one in the draft because you're going to have to draft him in the later rounds. And that's a little sketchy when it comes to middle linebackers. But... Um, you know, you got some solid guys in free agency that play that position, or just a linebacker in general that could come out and play the true middle linebacker position. Um, you know, you got guys like Sean Lee, who I've uh, physically spoken about and said that I think that he could be a uh, good guy here in the system. I don't know how much he would mold uh, with the teammates that he has around him, but I think that he would fit the system well and knock on wood that his injury history doesn't play a part in Jacksonville, but that's always something to, of course, worry about. You also got uh, L uh, L Lorenzo Alexander from Tampa Bay, who I think is going to be a free agent this year. He's a little bit on the old side, but uh, bringing him to an elite defense filled with dogs and guys that you know can go out there and get the job done, I think that would fit his uh, preference of a team that he's trying to fit in with. And I think Jacksonville is a good fit for him. And like I said, the Jags are still after that true middle linebacker to really have Miles Jack and Telvin Smith do their things on the outside. Because Miles didn't really fill in well at the true middle linebacker position this year. You can say what you want, but he didn't. And uh, we'll see what the Jags decide to do. If they're going to try and roll with Miles Jack in that position another year. Or if they try and bring in a veteran like a Sean Lee. And coming in at number one, we have the guard position. It's funny, we were in the same boat last year uh, with the free agents and who we thought the Jags were going to be targeting. And of course, they did target Andrew Norwell at the end of the day, and he ended up being an all right uh, prospect for the Jaguars heading into the 2019-2020 uh, season. Um, but 
he ended up getting hurt, and he kind of slacked a little bit. Uh, the Jags are still trying to replace A.J. Can, who, of course, will be a free agent this year, and I don't see the Jags uh, bringing him back, unfortunately, for Can. He's had all the chances in the world, and unfortunately, his chances have came to an end, at least as of now, um, that he will not be back for the Jaguars next season, and they are going to be trying to look for somebody to replace him. Now, there is an argument to be made that the Jags have had some decent history drafting offensive linemen. Uh, Eugene Monroe is another guy, is a guy that I always said was a good pick, but, you know, he didn't last very long. Uh, the Jags also drafted, obviously, Tony Baselli, Brad Meester, Brandon Linder. You know, they drafted a lot of their core offensive linemen that are studs, Cam Robinson as well. Um, the only guys, Andrew Norwell, Jeremy Parnell, those guys aren't um, draft picks by the Jags, obviously. But... Um, I think a veteran fit in this scheme would make the most sense, but the Jags also decided to go out and draft an offensive lineman um, in the later drafts to maybe fill this void. You also got guys on the team right now that can fill this void, like Will Richardson, who's a tackle, but a lot of people are saying that maybe he's going to fill in for AJ Can's spot. I don't know. It's going to be interesting, and I think that the offensive guard position is something the Jags are really going to look forward to to improve heading into the 2019-2020 season because the offensive line was vulnerable and very, very hurt. So in any case, that they could go out and they could get a guard, he might not start next year, but he could add really good depth to an offensive line that truly, truly needs it. And that was five positions that the Jaguars are going to try to improve through free agency. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Tree Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel five days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Also, if you guys haven't yet, make sure you join Tree Talks AAF Pick'em Contest. Uh, there's going to be a pinned link down below to the Facebook group you can join. Let's get it. Let's see if you guys can win some money. Thank you guys for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.